Okay, good afternoon. Since we had a little bit of a technical difficulty with the lecture last Friday, I'm going to actually record some little videos of the other things that we didn't cover. The first one is the rhinovirus. The rhinovirus is one of the most successful pathogens of humans. It is an infection of the nose and is the most frequent cause of the common cold. There are over 1 billion colds a year. And that is one-seventh of the world population. Everybody's familiar with the disease course. The symptoms begin two to three days after infection, sometimes earlier. You will get nasal discharge. You sometimes have a headache, sore throat. And the symptoms are really a reaction of the body to the presence of the virus. Most of what you feel is actually your immune system attacking the cells that have been infected. And these will be in your nasal passages, and those will become inflamed. And then the tonsils will also become very inflamed because that's where a lot of the immune cells that are fighting this infection are. Normally without treatment, a cold abates in about nine days. And as we've talked about before, there are no cures for the common cold. Pathogenesis. This organism is a picarnovirus. It's similar in structure to the polio virus, which causes a more serious illness. And it's a very simple virus. It's small. It has a capsid of 20 interlocking pieces. Each of these pieces are made up of five proteins. It has a positive single-stranded RNA virus. And when it goes to the ribosome, it can be translated. The single trans strand is translated into a polyprotein. And then as you can see here, the protease is made and then it will clip out all the other pieces. The VP4 through 1 are part of the capsid, the VPG is also part of the capsid, and the polymerase is actually the replicase. The life cycle is very straightforward. It enters the ICAM receptor, it then fuses with the membrane, gets in, the viral genome goes directly to the ribosome and is translated, this polyprotein is degraded. Parts of it go off and make the capsid pieces. The replicase then goes, attaches to the genome. It takes the positive strand, copies it into a number of negative strands. A little bit later, you then have further translation. And then even a little bit later, this negative strand is copied into positive strands. These positive strands assemble with the pentamers of the VP proteins to make a capsid. And that capsid then assembles, you have cell lysis and release. So it's a pretty straightforward, this is typical of positive single-stranded viruses and RNA viruses and how they replicate. So that's one of the reasons we include it. It's a good example of that. And it's also a very common illness. Diagnosis and treatment, symptoms are readily recognizable. In fact, in most cases, people will mistake other illnesses as colds. There are over-the-counter medications that can lessen the symptoms of the disease. A vaccine is probably impossible due to the rapid variation of the virus. Because it is an RNA polymerase, it tends to not have an editing function and therefore make lots of mistakes. Those mistakes cause changes in the protein capsid that then cause your immune system to not recognize it anymore. So you can get colds over and over throughout the years. And as I said, vitamin C does not work. Double blind studies have shown that vitamin C is totally, totally ineffective. Okay, so group discussion, as we talked about in class, is why can HPV cause cancer, yet rhinoviruses cannot? For those of you who are not at the lecture, I'll let you think about that. And I encourage you to pause the video right now and try to think of some reasons and then I'll tell you the answer in a second. All right, the reason is the rhinovirus is an RNA virus. RNA viruses do not, at least this one does not, ever have a DNA part of its life cycle and therefore it's not going to be able to insert into our own genome. 
the HPV virus is a double-stranded DNA virus that in fact inserts into the genome. It then disrupts the regulation of the cell, causing oncogenes to become active and then uncontrolled and unregulated replication. Okay, that is it for rhinoviruses. See you later.